Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm joined by Dave from Talking Wolves once again to take a look ahead to our game at the weekend. Dave, kick us off with your thoughts on your season so far, please. Yeah, it's it's, it's been okay, mate. Um, there have been moments where I've been frustrated, but ultimately when you look at what happened uh, at the start of the season for Wolves with Lopetegui leaving right before the season and Gary O'Neill coming in without a pre-season and so on, we, we've done okay. Um we're probably slipping out of it a little bit now, but to be in the conversation still for Europe up until, you know, recently has been, you know, a fantastic achievement for Gary O'Neill, really. And, you know, we were hoping that we go a little bit further in the FA Cup. You know, we had a great game for the neutral, I suppose, against Coventry, which uh, unfortunately we lost out in. But, you know, we picked up some great results, um, you know, beating Man City, got in the double over Spurs and Chelsea. You know, we've had a, a very good season on that front. And ultimately, I think if you offered Wolves fans where we are now at the start of the campaign, we would have taken it. But unfortunately, I think things such as fitness and injuries especially have, have caught up on Wolves now. And unfortunately, I could just see it sort of fizzling out now into an, you know, a pretty poor end to the season for Wolves. But overall, considering the circumstances at the start of the year, uh, we're in an OK position, mate. I'm hoping what you just said there about fizzling out, I'm hoping that comes true because, well, the performance of Wolves for the remainder of the season is of interest to me as a West Ham fan as well for positions in the league table, really. The European football one, you've always sort of been lingering, haven't you? You've never really been in the top seven, eight, um, but you've always been within touch and distance of it. And it feels like whenever we or Brighton or Newcastle have slipped up. You've never really taken advantage of it per se. And you just said there about how you're in the conversation for European football. Do you have much hopes of European football? Is how I'm basically trying to say is, how much are you dreaming of European football next season? Or are you just trying to ignore it and take it one game at a time? I mean, it would be amazing if Wolves could qualify for Europe. But I, I think I've said... Ever since sort of it was probably around sort of late Jan, early Feb, when Wolves sort of all of a sudden were, you know, bursting into and, and competing within, you know, the teams that were sort of between sixth and tenth, really. I've said, look, it's great and Wolves are strong enough to do it, but ultimately we need to keep everyone fit and you know, we've got to stay con consistent and, and plus you've got the likes of yourselves, Newcastle, Brighton, obviously Chelsea can still come into the conversation. You know, there's a lot of quality in between there that we've got to do better than. So it was always going to be a long shot, I think. But then you sort of hit the nail on the head there. Like this week's a perfect example. You know, uh, Newcastle and West Ham both dropping points. You think, oh, sound. But then we drop points. Like so, we just never ever been able to take advantage of it. Or if we get a great win the one week and want to try and build momentum, we, we we're not really building on it. So it's um. Yeah, been frustrated, but look, I, I, that was never ever the aim. I think at the start of the season, Wolves just said to Gary O'Neill, "Look, we're in a bit of a mess. Let's just make sure we're in the Premier League come the end of the season." And, and you know, he's done that. But as you know, in football, I think every set of football fans' expectations can uh, change very, very quickly. And when you're sort of looking up, uh, it, you know, in and around the January transfer window, you're looking up the table. You think, right, if we can build build a little bit here, we can push for European football. But unfortunately, it's, it's not been the case, and I don't think it will be the case come the end of the season. I think we'll have just that sort of mid-table finish. Has January window killed it for you a little bit? Obviously, Gary O'Neill has spoken quite publicly about how you had a number nine, uh, bro, yeah, ready to rock and roll, and you never got him because of money. Obviously, injuries to like Sakunya and Neto again. Is the January window, or lack of January window, perhaps, just ended any ambition you had for, for the rest of the season? Um. I think the squad that we had was, was was strong enough, really. But obviously, it would have always been nice. I think the the frustrating thing with Wolves was that we'd let two senior number nines go in Fabio Silva and Sasha Kalajdzic, and we didn't replace either of them. I think even if you let those two go, I understand the reasonings that the club let them go because they're both capable footballers that want to be playing football. And you know, you know, Fabio Silva is a young lad, and it's not worked at all for him at Wolves. But he needs to be playing football, and Sasha Kalajdzic ultimately wanted to get in the Austria squad for the Euros. That won't happen now because he's got an injury. But for Wolves to sanction both of those deals and, and not bring in a replacement striker is, is daft, really. And, you know, in games such as the commentary game, games like the Burnley game we've had this week, I think with, a, with senior players in those positions, we, you know, we've, we would have won those games. We've had to play since the Fulham game, really, which was maybe four weeks ago, we've had to play... 18 and 19 year old kids up front that have never played men's senior Premier League football before and it's just you could tell and I have no doubt in the future they'll become good footballers but they're not ready so 
it's happened before, mate. In, in Jan, the January w- windows under Bruno Large was a big one. He, he he was maybe sixth or seventh at the table, and we're thinking, right, if we can bolster the squad here, bring a few more in, you know, we, we could get Europe again. And we all just fell off towards the end of the campaign. So it's becoming a bit of a frustrating thing now for Wolves. No blame is being put on Gary O'Neill. It's just predominantly on on the board with how they've been handling things. To be honest. Yeah, you mentioned Gary near there. What's your thoughts on him? Because when we caught up ahead of the game in the London Stadium, I think he was. War- I think you were warming to him, and he was beginning to impress you more and more as the season has gone on. So since then, has he just gone up even further in your estimation? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I remember that game um, at West Ham. That was probably before this sort of little blip we've had over the last few weeks. The West Ham game was sort of the bo- rock bottom, I think, this season, as, as weird as it sounds. And after that game, there was a real reaction from Wolves and we you know, gone from strength to strength through Christmas and the New Year, to be honest. Um, that game was just probably one of our poorer performances this season, to be honest, at West Ham. But yeah, the, f- the fans are warming to him a lot. I think you can see how he's matured and grown as a manager um, throughout the season in what he's saying in the press and how he's reacting to certain things uh, mid-game as well. Um, but yeah, last night after the Burnley game, it's probably the first time he really spoke out about the club in regards to them, them letting him down as such. And no fans have said, well, Gary, this is your fault. Everyone has backed him to the hill. So yeah. Touch wood, long may it continue. And it'll be an in- interesting uh, summer because I-, I know you boys have been linked with him and a few different teams have been linked with him. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. Going into the summer, Ben, are you worried at all? And this is as a neutral. I don't know the ins and outs of Wolves, obviously. This is why I'm asking you. But there's been a lot of talk in the January transfer window, even before that, about Wolves and PSR, about how you're sort of maybe close to being punished or you had to you know you had to sell players in the summer and stuff like that and there's sort of talk that it's going to be the same case again this summer you, there might not be much money to spend there from wool so you've got that on one hand and how true that is i don't know that's why i'm asking you but on the other hand you've now got gary o'neill speaking about not quite the same reasons why lopetegui left but there was there's similarities there where a manager felt that he wasn't getting the players he wanted so off he went and i got gary o'neill saying hang on a minute you know we could have done some business in january but we didn't. Yeah. What's your thoughts going into the summer then in terms of the financial constraints and what the comments Gary O'Neill have made? I think ultimately, if Wolves want to strengthen their team, they're going to have to lose one or two big players. Um, that may well be Pedro Neto, although because he, he his injury record this season, we may not get the full amount of what he's worth. There's other players, Ryan Eight Nor, who's kicked on Jao Gomez. I, I think if, if Wolves want to spend this summer, they will have to sell at least one of these footballers. Um, they had to last summer anyway. We lost Neves mainly and then Nunes ended up going. But that was ultimately because they had to sort of panic buy in, in the January when Lopetegui had joined. Whereas this year, the club are saying, oh, we don't have to sell. But yeah, on paper, we don't have to sell and we'll be okay with PSR. But ultimately, if we want to buy, we, we there's not there's not real any flexibility really. So um, yeah, it's going to be difficult. I think Wolves... For me, I felt like in the last three or four years, Wolves have not been very good in transfer windows at all. Like they've been almost, I was going to say reactive rather than proactive, but they haven't even reacted to certain situations. Their their transfer strategy has been really, really poor. Um, So I'm hoping this this summer is a bit of a wake-up call for them. Um, If they get this wrong again, you know, we've lost... Someone had flagged up some screenshots yesterday. There was quotes from Nuno when he was here moaning about the squad size and not being able to strengthen. Bruno Large was very vocal about it. Um, and ultimately, I think Wolves almost ran out of things to blame in Bruno Large. The football wasn't great. He ended up getting pushed out. And Lopetegui obviously was very, very vocal about it. So the fact that Gary ne- uh, Gary O'Neill is now bringing it up is a bit of a concern for all fans, obviously. So I'm hoping it's a bit of a wake-up call for the board. But... I don't mean there's much flexibility. I think we're okay. We're not going to breach it, but we will have to sell players this summer if we wanted to spend big and have a bit of an overhaul in the, uh, with the squad. Right, last one on your club before we speak about my club. For those who haven't seen much of Wolves recently, which players would you say are on form and to keep an eye out for on Saturday afternoon? 
Um, Ryan Aitnori, the left wing back, has been fantastic. He's scored three in his last five now, I think. Uh, three in his last four, sorry, in all competitions. But he's missed two golden opportunities as well. He had a great chance against uh, Burnley this week and one against Villa on uh, last weekend as well. Um, but in, in terms of his trickery and his ability on the ball, it's it's phenomenal. And you'll probably see that on, on Saturday a, against us. Um, the midfield have been OK as well. I mean, Mario Lamine has been brilliant. He's been a bit quiet for the last few weeks, but, you know, always a fantastic player. Jack Gomez, the young Brazilian midfielder, has really kicked on as well. But yeah, a lot of our joys coming from that left hand side for Eight Nori. Uh, Mateus Cunha, who's fantastic for us, has been injured for a little while. Uh, he was reintroduced back into the squad uh, against Burnley this week. Don't think he'll start against West Ham, but I assume he'll be named in the squad again. So we'll we'll see him get some minutes off the bench, hopefully. But um, probably at the moment, in terms of form, Eight Nori is the man to watch. Right over to West Ham, then. What's your thoughts on us? I, I, I think, you know, looking at the, I said to someone, I think on our, on our podcast, I always seem to look at West Ham and it always seems to, to me, like you drop points. And then I look at the league table, you're still in such a great position in, in the league table. I so, think we're all dropping points. That's yeah. the thing. I think we're all doing it. Uh, Brighton, Chelsea, yourselves, us, Newcastle, we're all dropping points. It's almost yeah. like, like a glorified relegation battle or something. Yeah. That, 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 <laughs> who can do the worst out of all of us and who can do the best out of the, a bad bunch and you'll get European football. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I, I I keep seeing, but I think you know the the quality and the players. Uh, I, you might ask me about the players, but I think you know Jared Bowen's consistency in terms of his contributions recently, anyway, have been great. Kudus, you know, and Pakata are you know phenomenal footballers as well. So, um, you know, I think you guys are in a good position, and it, it's interesting. Obviously, I think we may have touched on it last time the situation with Moyes because I can appreciate fans want to see better football, but. In regards to how he's doing, you know, in the, in the Premier League, so it's a, I think he's doing a good job. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's going to be a tough game. I always look. You guys smashed us at your place, but I'm, I'm fairly certain we've got an okay record against Molyneux. So I'm quietly confident going into this game. But at the same time, you guys, you know, you aren't no mugs. You know, you you've had a very good, you know, a very good season, and I'm sure you will still be in and around that European spot come the end of the campaign. Is this a big game for? I, I'm, I'm. Oh, it's a big game for West Ham as far as I'm concerned. But for Wolves, is a big game because if you beat us, suddenly, suddenly, do you know you were quite reserved about getting your hopes up regarding European football next season. I understand why, but surely if you beat us on Saturday, that's got to really boost your hopes a little bit. Thinking, hang on, here we. And, and obviously, it depends on how other results go. Sure. But regardless, we are quite close in the league table and this will give you a bit of an advantage given that we've got European football coming up as well. This, does it feel like a big game for you? It doesn't feel like it. I think the fact that you've put it like that probably means it should be quite a big game. And I think if we be up, you know, if we're beating teams, uh, sorry, if we're beating teams like yourself, you know, we, we have got a good chance of European football again. But I think uh, ultimately... I think if we lose this, I think it, Wolves fans will just write the season off. Um, and I feel like at the moment, it feels like that already at the moment. Yeah. OK, so that's interesting. I would never have guessed that, actually. This is why I like doing these videos. I would have assumed, obviously incorrectly, that maybe there was a bit of hope there for European football. But then saying that, there's plenty of West Ham fans. I know that don't have any hope for European football next season. We're currently above you. We're sitting in a European spot. Um, so I, I get it to some extent. I just think it's a big game for you, actually. And if you beat us, I think suddenly it's quite hard to call who's going to finish seventh and eighth at the moment without any sort of big results like this one um, on Saturday afternoon. But anyway, turning our attention to the Molyneux on Saturday, how do you see this game going? What are you thinking? Well, it was interesting because Wolves tend to play and like to play on the counter-attack. And I remember when we went to your place, you guys wanted to do the same and you allowed us a lot of the ball and Wolves almost didn't know what to do with the ball at times. And you caught us brilliantly on the counter a, a few times and ultimately that's what won you the game. Um, I'm expecting possibly the same sort of game, to be honest. And I think, you know, Wolves will want to try, well, try. we probably will have a lot of the ball again. Being at home, you'd hope that would work in our favour this time round. Um, but, you know, it's the lack of pace of Wolves at the moment. You know, our front three is, is not quick. Um, you know, we're trusting these young lads who still physically don't really know where they're at. In, in my opinion, Pablo Sarabia, who technically is a fantastic footballer, you could tell doesn't trust these young lads on the ball either. So there's not real chemistry at the moment between the, the front, front line. So it could be a long afternoon for Wolves, but... I think if we can get an early goal and we're allowed to sit on that lead, I think that would suit Wolves down to the ground. But 
Um, the longer the game goes on without Wolves grabbing a goal, I think it could be a frustrating afternoon. But every chance of West Ham, because in terms of form, in terms of squad availability, um, Wolves aren't in a, a brilliant place right now, if I'm honest. You're getting my hopes up. This, this, while I just said I like these opposition previews for some reasons, uh, there's there's reasons I also sometimes dislike them. And this is one of them. You're getting my hopes up. Well, was, and to be fair, I'm quite optimistic for the game on Saturday anyway. But what you're, but it's more based on West Ham. I'm optimistic because of our attack, etc. But you're now getting me optimistic because of Wolves and the lack of threat that Wolves have got to offer as well. So this is this is this is bad news for me. But can I get a score prediction from yourself, please, Dave? Um, I, I do. I, I think it could be a goal either way. Um, let's be all okay. I think my head is saying a one-one draw. But my heart is saying that Wolves may well creep it, you know, and get that 2-1 win. But I, th- I think it will be a very close game either way, to be honest. Go with your heart. You can change your mind, but you yeah, can't change yeah. your heart. So go, go with you your 2-1 2-1 yeah. Wolves then, yeah, there you go. There you go. He, he got there in the end, people. <laughs> um, right then, um, I've done a video with Dave over on Talking Wolves. So if you want to see and hear more from both of us talking um, ahead of the game where I'm in the hot seat, he's firing questions at me this time round. The link to that video will be in the description. I'll be on your screen in approximately five seconds' time. But if you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it, like a thumbs up, subscribe, you can have a chat with myself and Dave. Well, we'll catch you over on Talking Wolves. Mm-hmm.